Right. Hello, folks. Well, welcome in. I'm Tony Higginson, and it's nice to see three of my regular panellists, Karen, Brian and Alban, all joining in as usual. And obviously our special guest, CWA Dagger winner, Kate Ellis. Hello, Kate. Hello, Tony. <laughs> so, I, now we must tell people, you and I have known each other, we reckon 20 years now, isn't it? Yes, it must it's be. frightening, isn't it, to think we don't look we don't look old enough to have friends <laughs> that, that, that are the age we are. <laughs> but in primary school, <laughs> maybe so. But yeah. no, I, I mean, you you very kindly um, are one of the authors that discovered I worked in a in a local independent bookshop um, where you just happened to have friends and relatives yes. nearby. So you used to come over at least twice a year. Um, I think you did a Dickensian day for us. You did oh, a Viking yeah. day. Yeah. Um, whenever you had a new book out, basically, you, you'd come over and, you know, would have a little party in the shop and, yeah. and see the same people, you know, that, that you knew that got to be my friends and gradually over the years, you know, attracted new 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 readers along. And um, obviously you do the same for other bookshops. But I think for you, one thing that's quite important is, is your connection with libraries yes yes i've always uh, i've always loved libraries since i was a kid one of my earliest memories was um going to a library in mossley hill and uh, cutting my knee on the way back really <laughs> oh no i've still got the library scar yeah <laughs> oh dear I've always, I've always been a great supporter of libraries well I like events in libraries and murder mysteries and things like that <laughs> well I, I think obviously you're not the only author for the last year not being able to go to a bookshop or, a, or an event oh, or a library must be yeah. torture oh it is it's terrible not not meeting readers it, yeah i mean sort of isolated did you take part in the perfect crime thing in liverpool in november did, did you take part in that no i didn't oh so you'll be there this year then that'll be okay then so. Well, well, no, no. There was it was meant to be in person, wasn't it? As many events were, mm -hmm. but I think they, I think they, they switched it. It's the people that run the Smithdown Literary Festival. Oh, right. Yeah, I would, I would, I would think that that. that well, if they don't know you, I'll make sure I, I drop oh, a, right. a good, a good word <laughs> in for you. Um, but no, they, they did a, a little week of um you know online author chats and things mm -hmm. which is great because i mean you know i mean brian does live in liverpool but he could live in australia and be joining in when we yeah. do this sort of thing yeah. um you know it's a long way to come from you know anywhere more than an hour away to go and meet an author in a bookshop or a library so i think there is something about doing things virtually that might pay off for people connecting with readers and fans yeah. Um, but you know, there's nothing better than being in the same room when oh, no. someone's reading from their book or, or t yeah. you know, telling you where the characters came from. You know, letting slip who they're based on. Because um, I bumped into um, a friend of yours and mine earlier today, Margaret Murphy. Oh yes. Uh, now she did one of these zooms a couple of weeks ago, and uh, her publisher and 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 so have yours actually kindly have given me some books to give away. Um, so we'll source out we'll source out some prizes for a little competition later. But I, I said to Margaret, I said, "Well, I, you know, you live near enough. I can drive over, drop the box of books on your front doorstep, you know, bang on the door and run away. Come back a bit later, and, and you'll have signed them." She said, "Oh, that that sounds good. I can do that." So she did. And the thing is, though, her Zoom was about three or four weeks ago. So anyone who entered the original competition, I'm going to have to go back through Twitter and Facebook for <laughs> nearly a month. <laughs> And find find a winner but luckily we've got four books to give away courtesy of margaret's publisher joffy books yeah. and um your publicity lady and apologies if she watches this I forgot her name yeah, beth right. but, yeah. but she very kindly has said as soon as um printed copies are available which is i would imagine they'll be available fairly soon won't they for um yes the, yes. the the new book because um 27th of may it comes out may but they 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 technically get printed so oh. that they can be shipped to libraries wholesalers bookshops yeah. um you know and there's no embargo so to speak compared to a brand new hardback so no, no, you know i'm sure as soon as beth's got a few copies um we'll we'll get them and you very kindly have sent me signed book plates and bookmarks oh. haven't you yes i uh have -huh. yeah so <laughs> Whoever wins gets a, a bookmark and a book plate. So yeah. before we start asking you any real questions, because this is just to 
get us settled in um what we often say to whoever's our guest is pick a couple of songs because this show goes out live on facebook on a monday but also goes out as a recording on thursday on a local radio station access northwest um so we can play the whole song on the radio we tend to just play the first 30 seconds in the facebook um but you know you're a liverpool lass originally aren't you yes sir. <laughs> so you know i suppose it was no surprise that you picked our our second most famous band um <laughs> i can't i don't know who the most famous band are yeah. but <laughs> but no you've obviously picked you know as as i think any of us would the beatles yeah. and um you know there's one we're going to play later that i think any writer would pick but um we're going to play a minute or so of penny lane and yeah. then you can tell us why you've picked penny lane Right. <laughs> I, f I always feel mean cuss cussing it off when people are listening, but <laughs> you know, we, really, so. we we want to get as much chat as we can, and you know, when it goes out on the radio, people expect songs every ten, fifteen minutes or whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, yeah, I think we all love the Beatles, but when you're from Liverpool, the oh, connection yeah. must there must be something there. So, please tell. Oh, and this is George, who's uh, Hello, another Beth. with us nearly every week. Um, and his wife Julie will probably appear in a minute as well in a in another little room. <laughs> He's downstairs in the garden having a barbie. <laughs> I don't blame her. <laughs> Sorry. So, Kate, That's why I was slightly late. <laughs> oh, don't worry. F fill us in a little bit. So I know you're from Liverpool, but I, I don't think I necessarily know that much more than well, you know. <laughs> I know Penny Lane really well. I used to go to guides there, and the shelter in the middle of the roundabout is where we had our fish and at our fish and chips after guides. It was it was and a cafe. It was library. a cafe till a little while back, wasn't it? Um, it was just a standard cafe, I think. Oh yes, but it used to be a bus shelter, of course. Yes, that's yeah. right. That's what it was. Yeah. So when was the last time you were um, you were the fire, back? The fire station of the firemen used to mm. be at the top of our road. So when was the last time you were actually back at, well, Penny Lane and that part of Liverpool? Can you remember? We came to um, a barbecue, an outdoor barbecue last week of friends and Chilwell. Um, yeah, we sort of drive down where that's where I used to live and all the happy memories. Yeah. So <laughs> the changes. So obviously you, you grew up in, in the Allison area. Um, yeah. You know, so... A, Obviously, you you did that, my right in thinking you studied drama first before yeah, anything so else. Yeah, I went to Manchester to study drama. Yeah, so uh, in in a way that must have set you up for invention without you perhaps realizing it. Um, yeah. Studying drama in in your head, percolating away all those yeah. years ago must have been characters and settings and scenes. Yes, and it help, helps enormously with dialogue as well. And <laughs> yeah, so I, I, we're going to ask you a, 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 a typical question that would ask an author. When you meet people, whether you're meeting them like you are tonight, you know, in, in, a, in, a, in a, a little group, how often do you pick what someone looks like, their name, a mannerism? How often do you, do you make mental notes and think, that person's going to be a body? Really? No. no. Oh no. <laughs> Don't worry, anybody. <laughs> no, I often think some crime, certainly crime authors, they they must meet someone occasionally at a party. And think, that fella's got a great Alban. I haven't met anyone called Alban before. That'd be a great name for a body. <laughs> I've had a couple of authors say that, you know. Yeah. I want to say at Pondon Hall, where the, where the writers go, uh, in near Howarth. Uh, I've not seen the, the book they've written, mind you, but um, I hope it's, it's a, a nice character rather than Chipmunk or something. <laughs> so, so you 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 you've managed not to cherry pick names and and. and I things try like not to. Yeah. Um, do individuals? So people just my characters just sort of come out of my you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. My head, really. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, though. The other thing you are madly keen on is history and archaeology. Yeah. I, I mean, which I, I wonder, even if we're not experts, they're wonderful things to be interested in. I mean, they're the sorts of television programmes that we all, you know, swoon over and, and suddenly think, wow, you know, that happened 500 years ago, 600 years ago. Oh, yeah. So when when you're sitting down, 
you know, with a clean sheet in front of you, do you start thinking about periods of history that you're going to write about? Talk us a little bit through how it yeah. all starts. Well, with the Wesley books, I yeah. decide, uh, you know, I, I, they usually brew in my head for about a year before I start writing As, them. Wow, yeah. Then I have to decide on the period of history and how it would fit in with the plot I'm thinking. Um, so uh, then I... Oh, I'm in my office now, so I've got... Yeah, no grab books. grab something to show yeah, us. Yeah. Books. <laughs> books about... I, I, I'm just uh, about to start on a new Wesley, and I'm researching Roman Devon. Oh, Next OK. The Roman Conquest, and uh, so I've, I've well, had all sorts of books out. <laughs> so just in case... I mean, most of your... Well, all of your fans will know where the books are set, but in case there's anyone out there watching or who listens who, who isn't familiar, you chose Devon well, nearly 25 years ago now, yes. I would imagine. And was it a family holiday? T tell us how Devon came to be the place where all these crimes are committed. I had never been there, and... Um... When my elder son was six months old, we were absolutely broke and this friend took pity on us. His parents had a timeshare in Torquay. And he said, oh, you know, you need a holiday, come, come down, the six month old baby. So we came down and this friend took it, so I'll take you somewhere really special. So he took us on this train, this little steam train and across the, um, the river on a ferry. And we ended up in Dartmouth. <clears throat> And I completely fell in love with the place, you know, and just when something clicks. So when I, when the time came to, uh, you know, decide where to set a, a series, I decided on that area of Devon. And it is beautiful there. It's got a rich maritime history, rich history. And yeah, I just fell in love with it. And we've been yeah. back there ever since. Well, and, and I mean, I, the thing I love the most is that you, you, decided not to name all the places as they are in 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 reality you know so Dart dartmouth is tra tradmouth and yeah. uh, oh yeah we've got uh, here, here, here's yeah. margaret joining us Come oh, hello, margaret. <laughs> she'll, she'll be with us in about two secs it's just, here she is oh yeah. hi margaret <laughs> oh hold on she'll, she'll be with us in, in one oh, little second not here yet. <laughs> no it, it's the joys of technology yeah <laughs> hi margaret Hi, Margaret. Are you with us? She is. Connecting. She's connected. Hi, Margaret. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, what I mean, it must have been an initial conscious decision to think, how can I twist the, the place names and have a little bit of fun? And, well, I and the place, place names because I twist the places. Exactly. Uh, oh, well, I mean, you've got a police station. In, I, in... I, ch I change things. And if if I'd use the real names and these twist, these twisted twisted sort of places, I get terrible uh, amount of letters in green ink. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, like uh, Dartmouth, or Tradmouth's got a police headquarters. Now Dartmouth, their little police station's just closed. <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, that sort of thing. But yeah. Oh. Um, and the, and obviously, the the other thing is that you, you've got, um, just so people know, you've, you've got Wesley Pitt, who's your main detective, um, and his best friend from university. Oh, yeah. is sort of working not so much for him but around him um and they, they often interlace and you know one thing leads to another so just just for, you know for those that don't really know how it works so you've got an archaeologist and you've got a, a, a police detective well wesley um and his boss jerry heffernan who's who's from liverpool he's a local lad for us yeah he, he is yeah, yeah. He is. <laughs> um that they're, they're um detectives in the uh you know serious crime squad and um wesley's a, wesley studied archaeology at university before joining the met and uh, tra then when he transferred to devon and uh, he's his best friend from university he's now county archaeologist so all neil's investigations sort of mirror wesley's in a way you know, and they sort of tie up and intertwine. And they say inside uh, every uh, archaeologist is a detective trying to get out. Well, I suppose so. so. Yeah, no, that makes it, that does make sense, doesn't it? If, yeah. Now, just, just, I mean, just before you tell us anything else, 
I think it'd be really nice. I think when people, are, 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 if they've not read an author or a series, hearing a little bit from the start of a book is, is a great way to introduce it. So by any chance, have you got a Wesley book to hand? Have you got yeah. one you could uh, d delve into and find a little section? Yes. And th This is the, uh, the, the newest one then, isn't it? Well, it's the it's newest paperback. Um, there's, a, there's a new hardback out in August, but uh, this is the newest paper about the burial circle. Right, chapter one. December 2008. Where are you going? She hesitates. He's good looking, dark, late twenties, nice smile. And yet his steady gaze reminds her of a farmer assessing livestock at market. He leans over to open the car door. What are you waiting for, Hoppy? She heaves her red rucksack off her back. The thing's heavy, weighing her down. She needs a lift, and if he try, tries anything, she's sure she can deal with it. She climbs into the passenger seat, keeping the rucksack at her feet in case, the, in case she needs to make a swift escape. As soon as he drives off too fast, she fears she's made a bad mistake and she clings to her seatbelt as if it's a protective shield as he presses his foot on the accelerator. Once out of the town, the darkness closes in around her. Hedges like walls flash by, looming in like a trap as the roads grow narrower, a labyrinth leading to God knows where. When he changes gear, she feels his hand brushing against her knee and she moves her leg away fast, telling herself she can cope with this. Drop me here. We're not there yet. Drop me here, I can walk. He ignores her and carries on driving. But as soon as he stops at a junction, she opens the door and stumbles out onto the lane, falling to her knees before hauling herself upright. The air is cold and her jeans are damp with mud. But she begins to walk, hoisting the rucksack onto her back, determined to ignore the sound of the car engine throbbing slowly behind her. She can see the signpost. Not far now. What she doesn't know is that in an hour's time she'll be dead. What oh, that's note? a happy note. That, no, <laughs> well, I think if you write the cri crime books, you've you've got you've got to have um, you've got to have something happen, haven't you? You know, this is the thing. You know, um, you know, you've 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 got to have something nasty happen to someone, otherwise the. There's nothing to, to make people carry on reading, really. So mm -hmm. this one's, it, it, isn't it sort of a, a, is it a stone circle that's used as the um, place where the body's discovered at the start of the of the book? Is that this? Oh, one? no, not in no. the no. burial circle. No, uh, that's the hanged woman. That's the uh, Albert Lincoln. Oh, oh, no, we're talking about that later. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, the, no, this one, the body's found um, 10 years later, uh, 12 years later. Um, Under a tree, is this? A tree, a tree yeah. falls down in a gale yeah. and uh, a body is found on a stormy night. <laughs> so d let's let's quickly go over a little bit. So Wes Wesley came to life in 1998, which is what, 20, 23 years ago? No. That's absolutely bonkers. So obviously a year or two before in your head. Um, mm -hmm. When you created him, did you genuinely think it 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 he'd still be a policeman and everything that's happened to him. You know, it, how how does that work in your head back then? Can you actually go back that far and think what? I don't think I, I thought beyond a couple of books. I, no. I, I wrote Merchant's House. Then I, um, as that was being considered by publishers, I, I wrote um, The Armada Boy, the second in the series. But I don't think I uh, I thought much beyond that. And obviously, they, they've all got distinct periods of history that are yeah. fascinating. When when you go back to Tudor times, you've done a Viking one. Obviously, you, you you're talking about you know do, doing a Roman period one. Yes. Um, obviously, with you, you've got the background in history and archaeology, but when you're doing the research, are the periods that you have had to research that you're thinking? This is hard. How how am I going to work this in? I mean, you know, what what's been the hardest period of history to blend into a modern crime novel? I think 
probably, um, you know, the further back you go, the less written, written mm. material there is and, less, and the fewer records. So I think, I think you've, you know, you've got to be a bit creative. <laughs> yeah. And there's, the, there's a couple of them where the, the actual crime in the past is roughly the same as the crime in, in the modern day. There's, there's, a, there's a synonymy of sorts between yes, it mirrors, what, yeah. what, what's been discovered and what's happening now. Yeah, it's either, um, it's either mirrors what's happening but is not connected or... Um, you know, um, oh, there's a few of them where the, there's a, a, a distinct, you know, just a time lapse almost of uh, yeah. something that happened ten, 10 years or so back that lurks in the in the background, yeah. um, you know. But you know, before before we ask you anything else about Wesley and and Neil and 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 Devon, um, I think we'll play another song that I well you suggested this obviously, but fits in perfectly with um, what you write about. And it ties in with a TV series, which um, I'm sure millions of people love. And it's the lovely Johnny Flynn and the theme tune to The Detectorists. Oh, it's a lovely song. <laughs> Will you search through the lonely earth for me? Climb through the briar and bramble. I'll be your treasure I felt the touch of the kings and the breath of the wind I knew the call of all the songbirds They sang all the wrong words I'm waiting for you I'm waiting for you sweet little song isn't it it's only two minutes long it's oh, lovely isn't it that is, that, yeah that, that, but it, well, aren't the lyrics perfect for for, yeah. for what you write about yeah. you couldn't are. have paid you couldn't have paid someone to write a song that you could use as your theme tune basically <laughs> so i mean the one thing um i think that really makes your your wesley peterson book stand out not only is wesley himself um and you know, in a minute, please do tell us, you know, how he came to be. But it's some of the, 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 the bits of history that you pick. It's some of the dark, nasty things that people did back a long time ago. And it's almost like, were they ever found out for the things they did? Or were we finding out as we as we go along with what Wesley's dealing with in the modern day? I mean, there's, there's some, I mean, that one where they, they, they set people free and they hunt them. You've got one where oh, they have the, the, yeah. the medieval hunts, isn't it? I mean, yeah. that's 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 not nice, is it? No, yeah, they, they used to uh, do that. The, the, the wicked hunting squires of Devon. That's it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that gets used in the modern yeah. day a little bit as well as in in the in the past, doesn't it? Um, from from what I remember. So, how did you, you know, Wesley? Where did he come from? I mean, what? How did he pop into your head and become? A that the, the chap he was as a as a fresh policeman, but you know, obviously you've you've had to grow him and give him a family, give him things that happened to him, um, you know, keep him sane almost, I suppose. <laughs> well, I've got, I've got I've got a friend from Trinidad who comes from a very uh, medical family, and uh, you know, knowing her, 
he sort of grew in the head. Um, yeah, so he just sort of appeared. I didn't make a conscious decision to to choose him. I think he chose me. Yeah. Um, and uh, he's yeah, his father's a consultant, so his mother's a GP, and his sister's a GP. But he's the odd one out in the family. He he was always passionate about history and archaeology and uh, and uh, read Sherlock Holmes under the bed covers when he was a child, you know. So and then uh, when he joined the, he did a degree in archaeology, got a first. And when he uh, joined the Met, he, he was uh, seconded to the Art and Antiques Squad because of his qualifications. But then, then he, he married um, a fellow student, uh, Pam, and uh, she's from Devon, so they ended up in Devon. Uh, and he came to be. Uh, I mean, am I right in saying that he was the first English black crime character, um, detective character? Is that is that a right memory, or can you think of anyone else? Not. No, I should imagine this. Yeah. No. But he was certainly perhaps one of very few when you when you shaped him and, and brought him to life, um, you know, which must make make you feel quite proud in a way that you you sat there and thought I can create someone and he'll mean something to people as well, you know, because the identity and connection, you know, is is something that is becoming more and more seen and more and more important in in you know in fiction and in life really. Um, you know, and you know, it must have been quite brave to to, you know, put put this chap into quite a traditional, you know, um, you know, holiday area, and you know, everyone knows everyone, don't they? You know, all all the locals really know everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but you know, he's become part of it now. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. I think everything everyone respects him. People really like him. His detective sergeant fancies him like mad. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and and the obvious question that a lot of people would always ask any, any author with a, a series, I mean, at some point, you know, has your agent ever said, we're going to speak to ITV or Channel 4 or Netflix? I mean, what, has, has any of that come up? How often does that type of thing come up? Um, it doesn't. Not often? Isn't that weird? Because, I mean, crime is the most popular thing, yeah, both in fiction so and on TV, it. isn't it, really? Yeah. Um, that would make a wonderful but visually, visually, they would be stunning, wouldn't they? You know, yeah. I mean, you think of, of, I mean, Anne Cleve's books, are, you know, are brilliant. But, you yeah, know, yeah. you know, and then you've got, you know, well, Top Med, I'm trying to think of another crime series, really. But, you know, they're often set somewhere that is just, wow. You know, look, yeah. look where we are. They're not always set in cities and uh, so it's like, you know, the pastoral ones are often the more popular ones. Yeah. I mean, those old Yorkshire ones, um, Heartbeat and whatever, they were hugely oh, yeah. popular, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah, But, I mean, obviously, you, you know... The myths and murders, of course. <laughs> the, the, the other thing we'll quickly touch on is, I mean, obviously, you quite like the dark and the and the sinister side of things, don't you? I mean, that's a, a bit of a, a theme running through your, your books in general. Um, and you, you've touched on the, the paranormal and, and ghosts and things with another series that you wrote set oh, in, yeah. in e Ebory, which for Ebory. those that don't know is 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 York and under and another guise, isn't it? Yeah. Um, now, is this where your son going to university came in? Am I right in yeah. remembering yeah. that's where your son went to York? I thought he yes. lived there, didn't yeah. I? Yes, your son went to York and so, we went to... Actually, we went on an archaeological dig there, and uh, me and Ollie, and we, we wanted a bit of entertainment in the evening. So we went on one of these ghost walks, and uh, the uh, Joe Plantagenet series came about from some of the stories the uh, guide told us. I oh, I mean, the ghost story, the ghost walks in Chester, York, and I'm sure other places are. They're wonders, aren't they? I mean, oh. they, 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 if you go just as it's getting dark and there's a little bit maybe frost in the air, they they, they really are something special. But, yeah. you know, I mean, have you enjoyed bringing in the sort of, you know, the paranormal type stuff, yeah. ghosts and such yeah. like? I do, yeah. I think it adds, adds a bit of spice. Yeah. And and, certainly in the burial circle, um, that's um, about... Um, Partly about the death of a psychic. They have a psychic weekend in this village, and uh, the psychic is uh, found dead. 
Ooh. Yeah, we all saw it. Well, they, they obviously didn't see that coming, did they then? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, just touching on the Joe Plantagenet series. So, I mean, there's been five of them so far over yeah. a, a spread out period, um, you know, about eight, nine years or so, isn't it, really? Mm. Um, I mean, yeah. is there another one coming? How how, no, you know, how often can you write another one? You have to find time, obviously. Yeah, I, I, I would like to write another one, but it's a matter of time. Yeah, yeah. No. Um, you know, because I mean, I think obviously your main series, the Wesley Petersons, it you know, <clears throat> it's 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 sort of one every, it's like nine months or so in a way, isn't it? It's they seem to come it's through. One a year recently. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just seem to come through a hardback and one period of the year, and then a paperback right. a bit later on. So they overlap a bit, don't they? The yeah. the hardback and the paperbacks don't seem to come out. At, so the paperback of Burial Circles out now. Yeah. But the hardback of the new one comes out in September, August or September, doesn't it? End of August. You know, so the the, the split apart is what I was meaning. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes it's like the day the hardback comes out, the paperback of the previous one come comes yeah. out. Mm-hmm. Well, just just that Margaret, um, who's who's joined us down at the bottom, Margaret. Do you just want to um, unmute for a sec, Margaret? Is she there? Oh, no, because uh, Margaret's, um, we've just found out, I don't know if you saw it on Twitter the other day, um, Anne Cleves announced on Twitter that Margaret's up for the same award that you yes. won two years ago, the, the CWA dagger in the library. Yes. Um, you yes. know, so it, it it's wonderful to tell people that Margaret's up for a major award as well. Yes. And obviously, luckily, I suppose, when you won it, you, you could go to the awards and all that, couldn't you? It was, it was back in the day when oh, you were allowed out. <laughs> but you know, I mean, it's voted for people who who work in and you and use libraries, isn't it? It's, yes, it's, yes. it's a real popular. You know, we we we've, we've read this this person's books. We think they're great. You know, so you know, if you're going to win an award, to win one that's actually voted for by library users and and librarians is it must be must make you feel just that little bit more tingly, oh, really. Yes, it means it means an awful lot. Yeah. 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 Um, you know, so that, I mean that was 2 years ago, wasn't it now? Yes. And you've been nominated for a, a couple of other awards. Were you nominated for the Thigston's Crime Book of the Year? Yeah. Is, is yes, that right? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, is that going to go ahead this year? That they have a big festival, don't they, over I, in Harrogate? I think it, it is, but whether, you know, whether it'll go ahead live, I'm not yeah. sure. Everything's up in the air at the moment. Yeah. So, I mean, just just you know, planning ahead and all that. Have you actually got any live library or bookshop events coming up in the not too distant future at all? Have you got any in the diary we can people can pick up on now? Just to... uh, I've got a, a couple down in Devon in September. Yeah, <laughs> non locally and possibly uh, well, Margaret will know about this. Uh, possibly um, a launch of the Mer- Murder Squad anthology. Oh yes. Well, Murder Squad, and I'm in it. Yes, we must, and, we must, uh, we must tell people that. So yeah, the mer- anthology coming out in uh, in August, and we're going to have a launch in uh, Whitley Bay up in uh, Northumberland. Yeah, the the Margaret was saying earlier that the people that have just opened it's a brand new bookshop that's open yeah. there, isn't it? Your your friends with Anne Cleves who used to live in in the northwest now lives over in the northeast. Yeah. Uh, so there's yourself and Margaret and Anne. Um, a chap called Martin Edwards, um, Chris Chris Sims, yes, and um, oh. Kath Staincliff. So the, you're all basically nor- northern or northwest authors of crime who have, have formed your own uh, sort of little murder squad. And uh, yeah. normally, you, you know, you'd, you'd gather together a couple of times a year and meet meet people in a hotel, a library, a bookshop. Yeah. You know, hopefully that's something that will happen um at some point so no Whit- whitley bay in september was it uh august august yeah. good time of year to go to whitley bay that oh, isn't it yeah <laughs> now are the fish and chips there as good as down in in devon dare we ask are you allowed to pass uh no they're probably equal aren't they? they always taste nicer when you buy the seaside don't they no, no matter which bit of seaside <laughs> it is yeah but I mean that that's forum books who have opened up a brand new bookshop yes. by popular demand, wasn't it? It yeah. was you know, people like Anne kept kept saying to the owners of the of the original bookshop, Whitley Bay would be good for, for a bookshop and yeah. somehow by 
by good grace and luck they've uh, they've managed to fulfil the dream and you know it, they're opening up as we speak. I think. Yes. Um, in fact, there's I think I've seen there's three or four bookshops recently opened, um, which is great because I mean as you know from you know coming over to Form B C Me and and other bookshops you know it it was hard for bookshops a few years back. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean. <sighs> There are places people can choose to buy from, which is fine. But sometimes they perhaps don't realise that the place nearest to them, if there's a bookshop in the town that they live in, they they can't compete with what you buy in a supermarket or or mm. from big big you know online retailers. So yeah. you know, it, I don't think people ever set out to cause demise. But you know, a fiver spent locally stays local when you spend it with big conglomerates sadly unfortunately you know it, it, it dissipates and, and doesn't support the local economy unfortunately anyway I think, I think with lockdown people are coming to appreciate um local bookshops yeah well i was saying this to margaret earlier because mm. you know she was saying how are things going i said actually <coughs> now that the weather's picked up and people have been shopping local um online and local has, has been really good for me um mm. you know i've i've actually had a good three months of people responding to the fact that well if you're going online use a real bookshop yes. buy off them and a few people have been really pleasantly surprised like you know you get signed copies or you know authors post your book plates some of the publishers do editions with like book club notes of books now don't they you know mm. they actually give, give you a little bit extra and give them to the independent bookshops um and we've got um, a, a week celebration for independent bookshops in june so hopefully by then, we're allowed to invite people like you and Margaret, you know, to, to physically be somewhere and uh, jo- join in and, and actually meet people who, who, who read the books. Um, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll play another song and then we'll, we're going to move on to your, your most recent series, which has been getting absolutely brilliant reviews. Um, I mean, this is a setting back in time isn't it you you know um straight after the first world war yeah and you you've chosen peak district derbyshire type yeah. type area um and well, there's a lot of liverpool in it but oh, well, yes well i know because yes uh, well that that's an, another nice touch to be yeah. able to move people around a little bit yeah. isn't it um you know, but you know, we, we, we you know, we're going to look at the Albert Lincoln books in a few minutes. But you know, one of the songs you um, picked is it's one of my favourites as well. I heard one rumour that Ray Davis wrote this when he came to Liverpool and well, walked on Crosby on Waterloo Beach. Crosby he did. did. Yeah. Um, you know, so if that's true, it's good for me because you'll have seen some of my photos of the Iron Men at sunset on Waterloo <laughs> Beach, haven't you? <laughs> I'm getting getting quite good at it now. Yes. <laughs> Margaret Margaret's given me a website to to send some of them to actually. So uh I'm gonna be uploading some of my photos and, and sending them off to uh off off to a website and yeah, people might see them, which would be good. Now, Kate, there's there's two things here. We've got the original version, and then I found um a slightly um tweaked version, which has got a bit of a, a choral setting. So it's up to you. Do, you. do you want the original or do you want Ooh. to hear the tweaked version? Well, I like the original, but uh, I'll try anything once. Okay, anything. <laughs> okay. well, let, let's see what you think and let's see what everyone thinks. So this is a, a version that Ray Davis, um, I think like a lot of people, they get asked, why didn't you put strings in or require in? So this this is the original song as was, but it's just got a little bit more added to it. So shall shall we have a little listen? Okay, 
We think with a little bit of Corval in the background, I quite yeah, liked yeah. it actually. Yeah, yeah. I thought it worked. Yeah, so you'll have to have a little, whether you use Spotify or, right, or, or other mechanisms to just have a little Google for the Kinks uh, Corval because yeah. I'm pretty sure, like a few artists have done, they've added a whole new layer of sound to you know songs we all know and love, and yeah. sometimes it works really well, really. Um, so Obviously, you've got a, a long-running, very successful series that everyone loves. I mean, archaeology and crime genuinely are a good mix. I mean, Ellie, Ellie Griffiths does a, a similar thing on the other other side of the country, doesn't she? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And I think um, there's there's a couple of series on telly that have had that type of angle, you know, used, haven't they? They've had someone brought in to look at, you know, something that's dug up at a, a crime scene. You know, it it, yes. it it has been used, at, you know, on in a few TV. Um, yeah, it's, been, it's been an episode of Lewis, an episode of yeah, the other. Yeah, they, they yeah, do, they don't do. they? They, they? Yeah, the, we could argue they've pinched your idea, but let, let's not oh. let's not go there. <laughs> 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 no, it doesn't. I, you know, I mean, it, it can't be helped, can it? People are always going to look around and, and and borrow, you know, from from other sources at times. I'm afraid. Um, but how hard was it to sit down and? start with a new character after writing one character for like tw best part of 20 years i would imagine oh yeah um well i had this idea which kept nagging in my head i'd i'd um come across when clearing up to my mum mum's things when she died i'd come across these letters from my to my from a matron of a military hospital in france to my Oh, would be my great grandmother, and telling her her son was serious, had been wounded. He was seriously ill and not not expected to live. And then a, another one, you know, prepare for the worst. And I've got two sons, and I thought, oh, you know that. You know, somebody sent me a letter like that. I don't know how how I'd, I'd face it. Um, but anyway, it turned out that that uh, soldier was my grandfather. He did survive. Wow. But it got me thinking. And then um, a, a stately home near us, done in Massey, uh, for the anniversary of the First World War, it transformed itself into a mil the military hospital it had been at that time. And uh, I just became fascinated with, with that period of history. Uh, and I then, you know, like, like most books, it just bruise in your head for ages and ages and I had this idea I thought I'm going to have to write it down so I started this book set just after just after the first world war yeah um with a, a detective who'd been injured in the war and uh, you know had to face the aftermath and and everything is and, and the thing we've got to remember is i mean science and medicine back then weren't like they are today i um, mean sometimes these days you know a soldier gets injured in a you know in in a battlefield and within reason sound staff but they, they can build him a new leg or a new yeah, arm back yeah. back then you know sadly yeah. if it was a bit serious they chopped it off didn't they yeah. you know <laughs> You yeah, know, amp amputation was a cure back back then you know yeah and part of the plot is um 
they used to make these portrait masks for, for soldiers who'd been badly disfigured. They used to sort of make them this thing. Oh, yeah. Their features, and that's part of the plot. That I thought, oh, that's... Oh, you can, don't, don't tell people too much more about that. Oh, no, that, that's no, no. the first one, A High Mortality of Doves. Yeah. And then there's... Uh, and uh, Albert's a, a Scotland Yard detective. In the days when Scotland Yard detectives could get sent up. Well, that American was the, the, the thing I was going to going to ask you to to explain to people that these days every town basically has a a, a murder squad or, or yeah. you know a regional crime squad is probably more accurate i think yeah. isn't it but back back in the, the oh, 1900s it was scotland yard and and you know they, they went by steam train didn't they you know and uh you know that that's a great device of it yeah. of its own for you the writer to yes, slow so thing to slow things down and let yeah. the character sort of think and dwell on yeah, on things and they don't get emails and mobile phone calls that you know they have to go yeah, to a yeah, phone yeah. go somewhere that has a phone line and yeah. or wait for a telegram or a letter to arrive yeah. oh, yes. you know i mean did you find it hard to write something that you couldn't use instant solving in i mean it's a great relief actually <laughs> you have to take all this technology into account what what's the latest thing what can they do now you know yeah yeah, because that's the thing. These, I mean, you know, in every crime book we read or TV we see, the the detective will suddenly a noise will be heard and they'll put the hand in a pocket and they'll pull out a buzzing mobile phone and yeah. there'll be a cryptic message from someone on it, won't yeah. there? You know, you can't do that back in nineteen twenty, can you? You know, and also, I mean, the lovely thing about writing about a period of history is that you can look at, at, at the names that were used in the day and what oh, was yeah. what they wore and what was popular. Yeah, and, oh, I love, I love all that sort of yeah. stuff. Because you've got a mer is it a myrtle in one of the books? There's, there's, oh, there's, yes. there's a myrtle. Please Don't get me coming back. My granddaughter's called Ivy. <laughs> oh, really? yeah. Well, they, they, they all say they go in cycles, don't they? But you know, yeah. it must be nice to, to go back and think, right? I don't need a Kylie. I need I need a myrtle. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, have you got um one of the Albert Lincolns somewhere nearby? Have you? Uh, yes. Are, yes, are I, you going to treat us to something from the new one, or are you going to read from yeah, one of the other two? Yes, um, this is the one that's out in back in May um but there's the three in the it was a trilogy the high mortality of doves yeah and he goes up to um Wenfield in Derbyshire which is sort of based around the New Mills area and the second one he uh, goes up to Cheshire near where I live um in Old Alderley Edge or Mabley Ridge as I call it to uh, solve a case uh, where he failed to solve a case many years before and this third one he's back in uh, Wenfield where the traumatic um, happenings <laughs> and uh, oh just a bit of background um there's a he's called up to uh Wenfield because an MP is missing and uh, a body has been found in a cave is he a Whig or a Tory <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't think I specified no say. maybe maybe a good idea <laughs> yeah. uh this body's uh, mutilated body is found in a cave uh, next to a stone circle called the Devil's Dancers. Um, and uh, of course, two years earlier, he'd been uh, sent up to Wenfield for a rather traumatic uh, uh, investigation. And then in, uh, in this one, the House of the Hanged Woman, um, there's another murder uh, later on and a man whose young wife um, appears to uh, live in a fantasy world. So uh, I'll just read you a couple of uh, short extracts. <clears throat> For so long, he'd been a dead man, a man with no identity, no history and no future. Then once the hazy memories began to crawl from the fog of his brain, he gathered what little courage he had left and embarked on the quest for his old life. He'd searched for the man he used to be, following the half-remembered shreds of the past that returned in brief, busy, vivid flashes like shell blasts. And when he reached Wenfield, all hope had died. As he rose to his feet and dragged his body towards the stones that protruded from the ground like the crooked teeth, of some monstrous long buried creature. Pictured ra pictures ran through his mind, some clear, others hazy. 
recollections of that perfect summer when he'd married his young bride, eat and kisses and sweet wet wedding flowers. Then the horror of a shell landing in the trench, killing his comrades and emptying his head of memories, leaving him an empty shell, cared for by nurses with kind faces, an unknown soldier without a tomb. His head was spinning and he hardly felt the jolt of bone against the hard earth as he fell to his knees again and the nausea rose in his chest. He no longer knew where he was and his soul seemed to float above him. Or perhaps he had no longer had a soul because it had, it had been made quite clear to him that he didn't exist. He crawled towards, towards the largest stone, the one in the centre of the circle. A faint memory told him that that stone was called the devil that it was he who commanded the eternal dance before he dragged the unwary straight down to hell. The devil loomed over him, bent as though he was playing the fiddle for the helpless dancers, controlling their every move as they writhed in their frozen agony. The nausea eased a little as he crawled towards the crevice in the rock that towered up over the circle. Not far now. He was hardly aware of vomiting. He felt numb, all pain gone as he edged inside the cave, escaping from the devil before he was drawn into that terrible dance. He was cold now, so cold, that his head was clearer, as though all the confusion of the past couple of years had suddenly vanished. He felt strangely at peace. As he lay down and fell asleep, his heartbeat slowing almost to a stop. He didn't hear the stealthy footsteps at the cave's entrance. He didn't feel the rock crashing down onto his face once, twice, three times, destroying his features, ensuring that he no longer existed. And then the second bit is a change of scene. This is Rose, the wife who lives in a fantasy world. I lie awake and my hands finger the smooth fabric of the paisley quilt my mother gave me as a wedding gift as I listen to him breathe, snuffling like a night creature making its way through undergrowth, sniffling its way blindly in search of sustenance or prey. Each night I dream of his death and I think of it every waking hour. I know I must be evil because I have murder in my heart. Murder, the taking of a life, the sin of Cain. I imagine that terrible, wicked act over and over again. And sometimes I think it can't be so wrong because it's the one thing that will release me from the misery of this existence. I turn over, finding myself trapped in my twisted nightgown. And I open my eyes to watch him in the moonlight that trickles through the thin curtains. He looks so harmless, almost innocent, almost like the little boy he must once have been. There's no trace now of the raised voice, the clenched fist, the ac accusations, the words intended to wound and humiliate. If only he could stay asleep forever. He's handsome, there's no denying that. I was 18 when we met. Because of my youthful naivety, I fell in love with his fair curls and boyish face. I saw him then as a character from one of the novels I love so much, the stories that whisk me far away from Derbyshire and land me in a different, warmer world where the plucky girl wins the brooding hero, tames him into a husband and lives happily ever after. That's what I believed in when I walked up the aisle that day, just before Christmas in 1919, so grateful that he'd come back safe from the war. It rained on our wedding day and the bare tr trees around the churchyard waved in the wind like the fleshless arms of the long dead. They looked as though they were signalling me to stop, telling me not to take another step towards the old stone porch. It was an omen. I should have obeyed. Bert stares. And my eyes open again. He refuses to come and I know it never will and until he's no longer lying there beside me. I slither out of bed and place my naked foot on the bare floorboards. Their chill makes me rise on tiptoe as I creep towards the door. I try the icy brass doorknob, doing my best to make no sound because I know he'll be angry if I wake him up. The knob twists noiselessly in my hand and I pull it towards me, but the door won't budge. He's locked it again and put the key beneath his pillow. I'm a prisoner. But one day soon I'll know happiness. 
one day soon, my husband will be dead. Wow. <laughs> oh, that sets the scene Delish. somewhat, doesn't it? <laughs> oh. So I mean, the, the thing about that and, the, you know, the Wesley books is you've got two, usually got a minimum of two periods and voices telling stories. How hard is it to keep them apart so that you, you, you let each one tell its story before, you know, they, they come together later on? I mean, is, is, did you just naturally pick up on being able to write two stories that are effectively the same story, but they're told in, in different ways, aren't they? Yes, yeah, so I suppose with, with the um, Albert Lincoln, they're about all in the same period. It's just that certain passages are in uh, from Rose's point of view, you know, because she had, lives in this complete fantasy world about uh, killing her husband, and uh, she 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 spends most of her time at the library reading romantic novels. Well, there's nothing wrong with uh, <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, it it, it was the, the 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 enjoyment of choice yeah. for many people, <laughs> but, wasn't it? Yeah, but but uh, in the Wesley Wesley books, there are two separate narratives. Yeah, I mean, do you, do you find you write one of them faster than the other? I mean, what how does how does it work for you with that? Um, I usually sort of intertwine them. Yeah. Or sometimes uh, with uh, I'm, I'm just writing the Phyllis Draft of one now, and I I've written the historical strand all together, so I don't lose lose track yeah. of the story, and then the present day strand all together. Uh, yeah well and yeah. Then, then i'll i'll intersperse them you well know, you, you know you've again you've got to tap into names and 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 things that are so different it you know it it, it must be quite hard as you're writing the historical period to think no i can't say that and i can't do that because it, it just couldn't and wouldn't happen at that period in time well, it's yeah. uh well, you know, you, you must. Do you not get headaches having written for the day? <laughs> I make life difficult for myself. I used to. Do. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean. You live, like you say, you live out um, not far from Alderley Edge. Have you have you been able to get out much and see see, see the outdoors in the last few weeks? Has oh, it been, been, been a freedom? Walks, yes. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'd say Alan, Alan Garner's got a new book due in the autumn, hasn't he? Oh, you know, has he? Yeah, the, 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 the real Alderley Edge wizard, oh, isn't yes. he? Yeah, yeah, he's, 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 um, he must be in his 80s now, surely. He was, I'm sure he was right when we were, when we were growing up, you yeah. know, but he's, oh, yeah. now he's, he's got a new, a new time slip, um, sort of fantasy for teenagers on the way in September, mm -hmm. October. So yeah. you, you'll have to keep a lookout for that. Yeah. Uh, well, that's the beauty of writing. You don't have to retire. No. Oh, well, too true. I mean, Mary Wesley, I think, was 70 when she started. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I think, uh, bless old Dame Barbara Cartland. I mean, she in, she was near 100, wasn't she, when she when she passed yeah. away? So yeah. age is no limit, isn't it? Yeah. You know, um, un <laughs> unlike in, I mean, were you saying just before we, we started chatting, more publicly have you just taken up ballet am i yeah yes but i don't think i'll be troubling Covent Garden. <laughs> no so are you doing it by zoom or are you actually getting to go somewhere yeah, to do it yeah, at the moment i'm doing yeah. it by zoom. before lockdown i was i did start going to classes yeah. which was great fun i really enjoyed it yeah well i suppose lots of people do yoga so i mean yeah. you know and you might as well do it with decent music yes <laughs> Yeah, you because know, I think the yoga you've 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 got to get into a mind set in a way. Whereas with ballet, yeah. you know, you get Tchaikovsky. You can't. Oh, yeah. I think if I was going to do the two, I think I'd do oh, ballet. <laughs> anyway, folks, listen. If you all want to unmute yourselves, I think uh, it would be nice if you know if, if folks uh, had a little joining in for 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 a short while. So, um, Karen and and George, Margaret, Alban, if you want to unmute, oh, Alban. We'll let you have a, a little ponder on on anything. Yeah, I thought that, 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 that was really fascinating. I, I like the idea of um, the archaeologist and, and the detective. I remember seeing somebody with a T-shirt who said, uh, I, I'm an archaeologist, I'm not interested in, in you unless you're dead. Which, <laughs> I, 
<laughs> I think it's what detectives would say as well, wouldn't it? Yeah. Well, that's what Agatha Christie yet said. You should always marry an archaeologist because the older you'll get, the more more your husband will find you fascinating. Yeah, yeah, which of course is what she did. And and yeah. and, and I was thinking about the Dartmouth thing. Of course, her, her house is is near Dartmouth, isn't it? Oh yes, yeah. yeah I go, go on a, a pilgrimage there every year. Yeah. Usually, it's about a six-mile walk. <laughs> yeah. Or you can get the train. You can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, I, my guilty secret at the moment is is I'm 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 binging. My excuse is lockdown, but I've always been interested in the in the Jacobites. But my binge is is uh, Outlander. I don't know whether it, it's uh, violent, it's raunchy, it's um, very corny. It's very, very watchable. And that does this sort of mixing of, of the historical and the modern. She's, she just tried to invent penicillin back in the 18th century. Um, so uh, uh, with yours, have you ever thought of doing time travel or are they two separate narratives? They're generally two separate narratives. Um... And, and it's one in the past normally? Yes, yeah. yeah. A yeah, one in the present. Historic, a historic, historical one. It's the locations. <laughs> The location's the same, Kate, isn't it? it right. If something happens in the same place over two periods of time, isn't it? Not necessarily the, exactly the same place, but yeah. uh, nearby. You yeah, know. yeah. It's, but, but basically, Neil's uh, archaeological investigation, and uh, no, he discovers things that sometimes echo Wesley's murder investigation. Right, right. You can see them complementing each other. Yeah, yeah, they complement it, yeah. Yeah. And um, George? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, hi, Kate. Um, uh, just in, interested, actually, um, you say it gets more difficult the further back in time you go, which is totally understandable uh, because you're researching and wanting to base things prim primarily on, on historical facts. Um, do you happen to know, though, if anybody has ever gone back and set maybe a crime thriller or, or a murder mystery in the Bronze Age, and might that be something? Because you know, I think about Dorset and um, Devon, and because at least Roman, um, I got the idea through these Roman curses people find, and also oh, yeah. um, mm -hmm. on Roman tomb tombstones they have somebody's life story and how they died. I've got you know, yeah. So, so you, you know, you do have some, and of course there's vigilante tablets. And so you do have some written material mm. to just give you a clue. But the Bronze Age, there wouldn't be anything, you know, to, mm. to, get, to give you a clue to this. But it might give you free reign, even, you know? Mm, yeah, but I, I like to sort of... Maybe. Wrap it up. <laughs> Base it on facts. Yeah. 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 As, as, as I said, I, th I think there's a bit of a flaw in, 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 in the idea there, which is, you know, if you are going to base it on facts, you need something to base it on. But, I um, mean, quite a lot of your yeah. historical so, plots that you've used are real, actually happened yeah. in, in, in the area, aren't they? You know, yeah. you've got real, they're real history that you've yeah. just taken a, a slant on. And brought into the books, aren't they? Yes, I think the skeleton room was based on a real life uh, discovery. Yes, a, mm -hmm. ske a skeleton in a chamber come manor in yeah. a sealed room. Yeah, I, Brian, yeah? I used to spend some time in uh, Gilsland. Do you, do you know off the Newcastle Road? Mm -hmm. Right, and Hadrian's Wall runs right, right oh, through yeah. it. Yeah. You know, it, it's, it's set down in the valley. Yeah. Um, there's a pub there called the Bridge Inn. I mean, I painted that one night, sitting on a windowsill in the dark, and I painted it. You know, but facing there, there's old houses, and there's a lady that used to live in it. I've gone back a long, long time, and she, she used to do bed and breakfast. And when people went in there, they were never seen again, right? <laughs> so <laughs> what they used to do, they used to Eyes do. Were nice. They used to kill them, hide them in the cellar and wait for the river to rise, which it does. It's torrential. Um, and then she'd tear them in the river, her and her partner, and they'd end up either at Newcastle or some, you know, another part of the, the country, like 
50, 60, 70 miles away. Right. It's one so way of get, one way getting away with it. Any ideas. I know. <laughs> yeah. So it just reminded me of it when you were talking about that, about the Romans and things. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And, and Ka- Kelson. Karen, you, you like um, the, the, the period that Kate's been writing about recently, don't you? That's a yeah. period that you're uh, quite keen on, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm writing a, a, a woman's romance saga based in the First World War. Mm. So I'm quite interested in your period. But I was just wondering what a typical writing day is for you and also whether you plan a lot or whether you dive sort of straight in. Ooh, right. Uh, well, tend to just go for a walk first um just give, give a you know time to think um start work about 10 um uh i i, I do a first draft very 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 rough first draft and uh then i work on it uh, i i don't I, I i do plan i i sort of make a a sort of flow chart yeah. and make notes but I, I plan about a few chapters oh, in fact i've got i've got a few here <laughs> a, few, a few chapters in advance and i just put it on little post-it notes and uh plan a few chapters in advance but the the first draft is very very rough yeah um, people could blackmail me with my first drafts they're awful um and then i start I, then I make notes about what, what needs to be changed because I know loads of things need to be changed. And then, then I start on the second draft and then it probably end up about five drafts before I let, right. any, let, any, dare to let anyone see it. Yeah. <laughs> have you got to be a quicker writer as you've as you've done it for longer, Kate? You know, have you ever thought, I'm, I'm quicker at this or...? Uh, I don't think so. No? Because... <laughs> I mean, there must, there when must you... come a point where you're confident, though, that when you are finally drafting what you're doing, you know you're going to get it right. You know, that... Were, oh, were you you always... know the problem, Tony, Go is on. making sure that you haven't written that particular plot or that particular thing oh, in another book. Yes, <laughs> well, I, I, funnily enough, that is it's a great yeah. question, that, isn't it? Yeah. That, could ask anyone who's written a long series. Have yeah. you used the same dead person twice? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever have you ever yeah. dared to think about it and go back and check? Go, there was someone called Bill in book three, and I've just used him again in book book twenty three. Once, once you've written a book, completely forget about it. It's wiped out of your memory completely. Yeah, yeah. Very strange yeah. because you're on to the next. Yeah, well, I think I've heard a few authors get interviewed on the radio and they're like, and sometimes they're asked a question and they, they can't answer it. And you're thinking, I, mean, I couldn't. Yeah, but, <laughs> you know, it's because, like you say, you, your brain really focuses on what's yeah. going on around you and what you're going to, to, to yeah. be doing. Yeah, you know, yeah. being asked about when, when did you wake up and decide to write a book about, you know, you know the Elizabethans, you're going to go, did I really write one about the Elizabethans? <laughs> when was that? <laughs> I mean, do you have favourite bits of history? Are the, are the bits that you would like to write about again, but you feel you can't because you, you've already used that that period? How how does that work I for medieval. you? I love medi late medieval. Um, yeah. In fact, I, I've done that in the the stone chamber. That's yeah. Medieval about um, uh, medieval anchor anchor <laughs> I mean, would would you have liked to have done like an Ellis pieces where you write one series in one period for you know? I think so. Yeah, uh, yeah, I. I... I do, I do like writing history. Yeah, because they've been. I've been listening to them on the radio, you know, on the oh, BBC yeah. um, Listen Again thing. Sound the sounds, isn't it? They've yeah. they've had some of the Ellis pieces on, um, mm-hmm. and they're they're brilliant listening, you know. Because I mean, the, whoever writes them down for radio, they do a cracking job because you don't, you know, you're not getting all the explanation, but you get all the. The, the 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 nuance and mm-hmm. you know and they're quite dark actually I you know I I think I only ever read a couple of them but oh, yeah. they're, they're quite dark actually mm-hmm. I was quite surprised how quite brutal they are in places. It's a brutal period. <laughs> I mean, I've, I, I'm, I'm right. I mean, yours have been done as all audio audibles, haven't they? And yeah, yeah. I mean, are you finding they've been really popular in in the last year? As they have actually. Yeah. Um. Really? You know. I, 
I think a lot of people have, have found listening to you know a book is something that they can do you know in in the last year yeah. just hope it carries on really um you know but um just just quickly with albert because i mean everyone i know all the library people i know and and people who, who read genuinely love him and the series and at the moment you're saying it, it's it's a trilogy and yeah. technically the last one in the yes, future. you have a happy ending in Liverpool. <laughs> yeah, but in the future, oh, okay. in the future, would you? I mean, surely at some point in the future you can say, "But I'm going to use him again, and he's going to be in 1930 or, or something." I mean, would you keep him on a back burner? Would you like him to still be? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you know, because I mean, they're, they're, you know, I always feel sorry for characters, let alone the author, <laughs> when it says the final book with you know, unless obviously like they did with you know, Morse and a few where the, the character dies, you know, no spoilers yeah. if you've not, not read them all yet, you know, uh, you know, the, you know, when the, when the main character gets killed off, well, that's a bit fatal really, but. Um, he can come back like Sherlock Holmes did. Oh yeah, they did, didn't he? Indeed. Ooh. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, but um, I always think, hold on, the series has just reached a, a point where everyone's getting into it. They're really enjoying it technically you'd argue you should be pushed to write an albert lincoln book a year and a wesley peterson book a year <laughs> you know well technically you know, that many time hours yeah, if you had the hours in the day yeah <laughs> but um you know but uh, you know is this something you're going to bring up if you publish a new agent in a year or so and say i think he's good to come back you know well never say never yeah yeah um because the periods you know like like karen likes that period I think a lot of people do like a period that they've got a connection to through, through grandparents or great grandparents. Yeah. You know, people talk about what their 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 older relatives did, and like you say, you know, we get letters and photograph albums and things like that. It's a period where those things are still real. Yeah. Um. You know. You know, old old photos are, are a fascinating insight into what what life was like. You know. 100 or so years ago um you know and again you know tv and radio are, are big things these days um mm -hmm. you know you know a period like that would be great for the yeah. radio or television yeah you know i think we need to start a, a reader's petition don't we of uh you know <laughs> make a series based on this lady's books or this this chap's <laughs> books you know it, you know, it must just be luck, mustn't it? You know, oh, it is, someone yeah. in a in a TV exec's office somehow yeah. reads a book on holiday and thinks, oh, this, this is good. Well, that, you that, know. That's happened. <laughs> yeah, I think it does, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, with um, the Murder Squad in August, so is the book coming out in August, these short yes. stories? Yes. So tell us a little bit about that. Have all six of you written something totally separate? Is six yes. totally separate um, pieces well, of work? Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the six of us have written three books, each, uh, three stories each. Okay. Each, including a, a new um, Vera one from Anne. Yeah. Uh, and and th there's um, three uh, ex-members of the squad as well. Uh, Stuart Pawson, John Baker and Ches Bra Chas. Chas Branchley, yeah. 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 Uh, and they've they've written one. They, there's one each from them. So are yours standalone um, short different. stories or with characters yeah. you've already written? Stories and all, um, and it's called um, "Many Deadly Returns: Twenty First um, Anniversary of the Murder Squad." And they're they're all separate short stories. Yeah, so have yours used any of your established characters, or have you written brand new? I haven't. No, they're all. Uh, are short stories more difficult to write than novels, or easier? Um, or the same, Ray? It's a different animal, really, isn't it? Different animal, yeah. yeah. I, I really enjoy writing short stories. Because so I've written one about a, a raucous hen party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like short stories. I think that they're, they're often overlooked because the irony is people think that they're a short story, that they're not getting full mm. value. But yeah. you've got to get everything right. In, oh, yeah. in much less words i mean yeah. you know uh, i mean half the thing with with a novel is it's the pacing and and the reader goes along and they get excited and then it quietens down but in a short story you, you've only got like three thousand words or something yeah. like that to 
get everything right, you know. Yes, yeah. I think that short stories format is more popular in America than it is here for some reason. I don't yeah. know. But the, I mean, again, talking about the radio, they'd be ideal for like little nine o'clock at night, Sunday night. You know, yeah. you could almost have the whole story, you know, in one go. Well, do, you know, do you know what we've started doing on Sunday morning, me and my husband, uh, on Sky Arts? They've got Tales of the Unexpected. Oh, the, oh I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they, some of them are wonderful. And it's like... Um, a lot of them are adapted from short stories. Yeah, yeah. That's finished uh, writers like uh, Ron Harwood, and um, and they're really they're really good. Yeah, yeah well, short, yeah. short televised short story. Yeah, and I wish they'd bring that back. Yeah, well, that's it. They could they could easily do, couldn't they? Yes. I mean, the CWA needs needs to you know get 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 their act together and uh, sponsor sponsor it somehow, doesn't it? You know. <laughs> did you ever did you ever see the Terry Thomas one with Glennis Johns, yeah. where uh, where Terry Thomas is nagging, nag, 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 nag. Everything had to be in the right place all the time. She couldn't move anything, and she was demented with him, you know. So she does him in. <laughs> I just cut you up a little. Don't tell me. Oh, 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 all right, all right. <laughs> so I'll probably see that. Well, when it comes on, it's fabulous. It's stuck in my mind that one. Yeah. 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 Terry Thomas and Glennis Johns. Yeah. So we, we, we're going to play one more song that you that you picked, and then we'll have a, a last little um, catch up. And then obviously let, let you get back to, to lockdown normality. At least, well, mm -hmm. no, you can go out in the back. You're allowed in your own back garden now, Kate. Did you know? <laughs> I think some people thought they weren't allowed in their own back gardens at one point oh, in no. one lockdown. It's terrible. It really was. So we're going to play um, a, an absolute classic uh, David Bowie track that you're a fan of and uh, play a minute or two of this. And then you can tell us how and why you, you picked this one. It's a god awful small affair to the girl with the mousy hair. But her mummy is yelling no And her daddy has told her to go But her friend is nowhere to be seen Now she walks through her sunken dream To the seat with the clearest view And she's hooked to the silver screen But the film is a sad thing for but she's lived it ten times or more She could spit in the eyes of fools If they ask her to focus on Isn't it funny you've picked life on Mars when there's talk of a helicopter fl being flown up there by 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 drone or whatever? <laughs> oh, I mean, so such a descriptive song though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And the string arrangement in that. I mean, I've got headphones on, and yeah. you know, there's time. Well, so is Alban and Brian actually. You know, but you you hear the production of a song like that. 1974, I think that came out. Yeah. Hun Hunky Dory was it the album was yeah. it yeah, yeah. So, yeah so is this your your going going back to you know first parties and and things like that oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, have you picked it because it was used for that TV series is that is that I is... love that TV series <laughs> I, I, also, I just I just love the words the atmosphere yeah uh, and the, the way the words are put together apparently he he wrote his lyrics uh, just on on pieces of you know just ideas on pieces of paper a few oh. words and then put then shuffled them together and put them together and it's just words well it, it you know it, it's going back to to editing in a way isn't yeah. it you know yeah. if you've got lots of ideas 
you've got to edit them. You've got to bring them together, haven't you? Really? Yeah. I, I heard a rumor they're making a new series of that, um, of Life on Mars, and really? um, oh, what was the other? The other one was the David Bowie title, wasn't it? Oh, was Ash- the, Ashes to Ashes, yeah. yeah. So I, I don't know if they're going to. They, they must have to stick to a David Bowie film yeah. song title, but no, I heard a distinct rumor that um, you know that they're the going back in. Yeah. You wonder though, don't you, with some of them? Because it, I mean, I don't watch Line of Duty, but a lot of people do. I started watching it. Have this... you started watching it from the very beginning, mm. or are you watching it now, like just the series that's I, on I now? Watched, started watching this series. Yeah, but you know, it there's quite a few people who have got a little bit fed up with with it constantly having little hidden metaphors and, and ciphers and. <laughs> Mind you, I, I didn't watch it, but I heard last night or the night before, whenever it was on, was a bit of a cliffhanger with two of the main characters pointing guns at yeah, each other. Yeah. yeah. Do, 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 do you see either one shoot each other? Are we giving the plot away? Does does one of them shoot the other or don't you see? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, there are no spoilers. <laughs> do you watch you it, George? They, 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 yeah, yeah, I saw it last night. They, they, they finished it with a blank screen and a couple of gunshots. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. Because Margaret, <laughs> who, who was with us earlier, one of her books starts with two police um, detectives and a gun and one of them's been shot, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. It's always quite a good yeah. plot line, that, isn't it? Let, let one of the police people do something they shouldn't do, you know. Mm. I mean, have you have you have you done that in any of yours? Have you ever had a, a detective have to do something a detective shouldn't do? Can you Not can you yet. remember? Not yet. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, just quickly on the Albert Lincoln books. I mean, you mentioned something yourself, which I, I'd made a quick note about about the the, the painted face um, oh, being in seen the first, in the first one. Yeah. So that that was something that actually was a real. Yes. Portrait masks. Yeah, called. for for, for the, the the chaps who had had you know yes. shrapnel damage and and whatever. Yeah, I mean it must be fascinating to to find things out like that and think oh, okay. that little bit is just going to work yeah. perfectly in a book. Oh, research, <laughs> yeah, because I mean obviously the Mer- the Myrtle in the book she 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 comes to a little bit of a of an unfortunate situation. Um, you know, you know that that's where the doves comes in, isn't it? Really, mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, it's it's always awkward when you talk about books that you you don't want to tell people what's actually happened in them. No. You just want to sow little seeds that something's yeah. happened, and you'll 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 really enjoy it when you read it. Yeah, especially in novels. <laughs> well, that, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, again, with when you write them, do you know? Do you always know who's done it? I mean, do you, do you yeah, work out pretty much early on? I think it's 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 going to be such and such a character. Have you ever changed your mind? Oh yeah, yeah. If I if I think it's getting too obvious, I'll, I'll sort of twist it and change my mind. And have you ever wanted to write one where no one gets caught? You know, where people get away with it, and it it's left to come back in the future. Has that ever been a you know something you've 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 done or thought of doing no because i think it would irritate me if <laughs> if it wasn't resolved yeah yeah so i i like to resolve <laughs> yeah anyway we'll, we'll let everyone have one quick um d- dab dab around asking anything they want to ask and we'll we'll start with karen um did it take you a long time to do the research for the uh, for the first world war book uh yes quite a while yes yeah. i can't say how long because i'm sort of doing it all the time you're doing it as you're writing yeah yeah do you do you do all the research before you write then Cameron? uh i've done quite a lot before i've written and then i'm i'm still doing it as i'm writing yeah i'm, yeah. I'm the same yeah yeah, I, I do some initial research and then, yeah, I'm, I'm researching again to yeah, right or, or just further research. And and George, yeah, it's just um, interesting. I'm I'm interested in the process by which people 
do things. So when you were saying earlier on, you know, your, your, your first draft, Kate, um, you know, is almost blackmailably bad. <laughs> not not bad, but almost blackmailably, you know, you wouldn't show it to anybody. But uh, <laughs> my, my interest, though, is um, how do you know? Is, is it something you picture? Is it something you say to yourself? Is it the feeling that you get or whatever? How do you know when something is right within that? You just know. You just know. What are you doing? Well, well, you say you just know, but I mean, is it? You know, are, are you picturing something? Are you are you saying something to yourself? Or you say, I'm just looking at you now, and you're picturing something. <laughs> There's a, there's, there's a visual memory going on in there, I think. You know what? You, you know what's wrong, you know, and, oh, that doesn't quite hang together. Or, oh, you become very analytical. And, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah, you just go so on. So you, you're kind of repeating it over to yourself and, and testing it and testing yes, it. Is that just, about right? Yeah. And then, of course, yeah. your editor is okay. there to pen a thing. <laughs> Have you got the same yeah, editor yeah, for course, a long yeah. period of time now, Case? Have you managed uh, to keep one? I've well, there's been quite a high turnover of editors in publishing houses. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I've got a lovely one at the moment. She's wonderful, Hannah. Um, yeah, she's very good. I had a very good one before, Dominic. Yeah, because yeah, that that can be the thing. You build up a relationship where yeah, you trust each oh, other, and and then the, they go and get pregnant, or get a better, get promoted, or get poached yeah. by a, you know, an author they've worked with moves to another publisher, and they 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 move with them and things like that, don't they? Because um, you've pretty much stayed with the one the main publisher, because yeah. or I, I think from yeah, day one, cool. haven't you? Yeah, Piatkas, uh, Little Brown. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, where some people sort of get halfway through a, a series and, you know, Harper Collins or someone suddenly buys them up and they, and they have to mm -hmm. start again. Um, I think Stuart McBride and a few people have had publishers come and come and go on them. Yeah. 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 So, Brian, have you have you got anything else to ask Kate or? or... You know, when you, you know, when you get into a part where you're going to have to think really bad thoughts you know for it to kill somebody do you have do you have to get into character to do that do you, really? do you, do you feel no <laughs> that's a great or, question or, you know. or do you just or do you just go like that and it's there <laughs> that's a that's a really good question you know because no, you know to actually delve into that character and be actually doing that particular thing that comes across in your stories is really I've been frightening. Reading, reading crime novels since I was little, you know, like a Christmas yeah. little. So I'm so used to that mindset. I can, I can detach myself. I'm not, well, yeah, you know, no. well, it was just, it was just a thought. Although there, there have been characters who were saying, oh, I could bump that off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there's a little one that you could think of. Where I live here, I, I live on a ley line. I didn't know that. I didn't know that until I got um, three um, psychics came about two months ago. And as soon as he came in my house, the lady sat on the couch and went, oh, 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 like that. And I, I said, are you okay? Oh, can't you feel that? <laughs> and the other were the same. Right? And she said, there's that many spirits are coming through your house all the time, she said. Which then I meant, and I've sensed things anyway, because I, I do, that. I've always been like that. But the fact they were fascinated, because she said, all day, they're passing back and forth, back and forth in your house. So I, I, I do paintings and just before they left, one of the ladies said, can I close one of your paintings down, Brian? And I went, well, yeah, if you, whatever you, you know. So they all went in the hall and they closed one of my paintings down and they, they said these words or whatever it was. And he said, it's all right now. He said, because we feel that spirit are coming out of the eyes of one of your paintings. Oh. Right? Uh 
that, that that's quite that could be quite a good plot line that you know yeah, for someone absolutely. well I, I, that's why i'm saying it you know have you used have you used the art world kate have you, have you done the art world well, yes i've had various uh i think in the house of eyes and there's art. oh yeah 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 because because wesley used to um work for the art antiques course. of course yeah yeah and yeah that. Yeah, but it, it is amazing how many different ways there are to bring uh, something into, um, you know, into a plot, really. I mean, mm. you know, within reason, anything you can think of can happen. You know, yeah. that's the that's the spooky thing about writing, you know, yeah. you know, fiction and, and certainly crime fiction. Um, and Alban down, yeah, down, that, down that, in that, Dorset. That, 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 I've been interested in that. I was, I was going to say, that when you go to Devon, go through Dorset, uh, on, on your way. Um, uh, thing about yeah, writing rituals, I mean, I mean uh, um, I'm obviously, I, I, I quite like my Dickens, and of course, he couldn't write until, unless he had absolute silence and his two um, fencing toads on, on his desk. And uh, his, his, his daughter came and watched him him write once and he was there acting the characters out i was wondering with your your drama background do you, do you have to have a silence in the room and and act, act the part out or do you have writing rituals music on <laughs> so, so, so you just have to have like, classical music on in the background and and that, that gets the muse going well yeah i don't like silence do you, do you have to have a, have a certain type of paper and a certain pen to write with you, 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 no. uh... <laughs> it's all computer are you straight to computer these days case yeah when you started was it to, i mean sound staff said 1998 but was it typewriters then or would computers can you typewriters. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or, or very early computers yeah yeah, yeah. so that you, must be the, you... the biggest change that you can edit so much quicker you don't have to yeah. get oh, the yeah. green the green ribbon or whatever yeah. else and uh go you know the copy decks or, or whatever yeah. it was called yeah. <laughs> yeah. do you type do you type do you on, on your computer or is it where is it um where to text i think it's called or something like that where oh, you yeah, speak? yeah i, I touched no. yeah yeah that must yeah. be the the best thing to learn as oh, as an author is is, is yeah. how to how to keep your typing skills up yeah. with with your thinking skills really you oh, know yeah. Anyway, anyway, listen, guys, we're, we're going to let Kate go now. Um, oh. it, well, no, because, you know, it's... I know. <laughs> I'm, I'm... Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm, Brian, you, really you, you're going you're gonna to stay with me and, and share some views in a poem. Yeah. If my anyone else might... wants to uh, stay, stay around for a short while, that would be lovely too. So from me, Tony Higginson and, and our little panel tonight, anyone on Facebook and anyone who watches this later on YouTube and on Access Northwest on Thursday, thank you very much. Kate Ellis, CWA Dagger winning author, our guest tonight. Um, you current bestseller, Kate, is The House of the Hanged Woman. Yeah. Have, you got one to, have you got one to hold up? Have you got... So I, that's... In paperback. <laughs> yeah, so it's June paperback. Now, Kate's, pub Kate's publisher very kindly are sending me three or four. I don't know if it's three or four, but let, let's say it's four. Four copies very soon. And Kate has sent me signed book plates and bookmarks to go with them. So what we'll do um, sometime later this week is we'll set a little competition up um, on Twitter. And we'll do one on Facebook. And a couple of people can win a signed copy of the new book um facebook and twitter so keep a look out for that we'll make sure we tag you on twitter so you can share it with with your with your your followers there case um and then the new wesley peterson is in s august september it's out in paper in hardback in august and paperback in february I think. so and and burial circle is the, the oh, current one is the uh, latest paperback yeah. yeah but now the thing also which obviously asking of you kept characters carrying on and had crimes not solved you can read these books in any order really i mean yeah. you know yes wesley and other characters who are in them all obviously do get older you know they don't don't stay locked in time at miraculously 28 in every book that's the hard thing isn't it picking the age to start your character i think yeah um i think there's one or two to 
detectives that when the person right they probably didn't think that through you know they start them off in the late 50s and 20 books later (laughs) yeah yeah yeah, well the 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 word prequel ends up becoming used a bit more often then doesn't it yeah Yeah. you know where they, they they think back on old cases um but you know within reason you you could pick any of the wesley peterson books um you know read it and then you could carry on or you know just just go to the library or to the local bookshop and see what they've got and read read them in any order really um you know and you know so it it, it'd be having his 25th birthday in 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 the not too distant future won't he (laughs) so that's got to be something you start planning for case and open you know we can have a big party in in manchester liverpool somewhere um and so hopefully sometime june onwards you'll be making a few public appearances oh, hopefully, yeah. um because i know bolton library you did an event with them two yeah, about two three years ago yeah uh, i know they're starting up in may um initially i think they're doing it as a um a video broadcast mm-hmm. so there will be people at the library who can watch the author mm-hmm. on a screen and it will also go out through Zoom or, or something similar. But I think I think um, a couple of authors, you know, they can get to Bolton are saying, well, you know, I could come to Bolton and you could film me live. So you can show it on the internet. But then anyone who's in the library, you know, at the time can also, you know, meet meet the author in person. Mm. Um, you know, so hopefully by June that will have started okay. happening um you know and yourself and other authors who can get to bolton um you know i'm sure they'll be quite keen to you know get you in partly because you, your cwa dagger is you know for connection to the library but um i think libraries are going to need people perhaps yeah. more than you know retail um you know they they, they need people to use them go in and, and do their research just, just go in and read you know, yeah. b- borrow audio listen you can borrow music in a lot of libraries can't you um you know so keep a look out for that i'm sure kate and all the other authors we know will be keeping us updated with um what's going on yeah. so what about the 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 new the Achington library in um on green lane in which in one green right? lane the Atkinson Li- i think it's called the Atkinson library on Lister drive in liverpool on, on the corner yeah Okay. It's all being renovated, hasn't it? It's it's, oh. it's it's fantastic library. Well, if you know someone who who is connected with it, Brian, just ask them to send me an email. Um, you know, because you know, I think you've got to know someone who works there to be able to, you know, oh, get in I touch see. with them. Um, it, it's very hard to send unsolicited. Would you like an author to come and talk in your library things? Yeah. Um, you, you tend to need to know one of the librarians really yeah. anyway listen well, folks we're going to let kate, kate disappear we're going to we're yeah. going to play play kate out with paperback writer which is becoming a bit of a theme tune you know i love it i love that song <laughs> i think it, it sort of makes sense doesn't it if you've got a guest author i think yeah. you know well, i think what i'm going to have to do in a way is, is see if other people have done versions of it <laughs> you know see, see if there's cover versions of paperback writer so we can uh you know get get someone else a royalty point because i don't think paul mccartney needs any money coming in at the mode does he <laughs> dear sir or madam can i write i love the beginning of it it's, i think i'm right dear in remembering sir. when this was released it was the loudest single ever to have been released the, well, you know, the, the volume that it was recorded at was was as loud as it could possibly go so um i'll make sure i don't play it full blast for us <laughs> So, Kate, Kate, your website's just kateellis.co.uk. Yeah. Uh, you've got all the usual bits of background, events coming up, um, yeah. you know, when the new book's coming out. So, dive on there, folks. Please also, if you're on Twitter, you know, make sure you are following Kate and, and retweet when she's got news. I think, you know, it's free to retweet. You know, it, it doesn't cost anything. You know, and if we all retweet, you know, for a few people, it it goes just that bit further. I mean, Alban and I retweet stuff from anything from political satire to Blackpool football results, don't we? Both we do, yes. Alban's a Blackpool fan case, isn't everybody? Well, no, because you don't get sellout crowds. <laughs> <laughs> it's too cold. There's only one side of the ground you can get fans in for for, for half the season. Have you been to Blackpool in December? <laughs> 
<laughs> there's a few grounds like that, aren't there? I think I heard someone saying Stoke City's another one. The wind blows a certain way, yeah. and the fans don't like sitting on one <laughs> side of the ground. <laughs> oh, it's a funny old world, isn't it? Anyway, folks, let's let's let Kate make her way off. Kate, thank you ever so thank much. Thank you, Kate. Well, thanks we so will, much. We great. will. Good we will. We will. Now we will see you in the not too distant future. It's a promise. And um, lovely to meet you. And you know, you. <laughs> ev every every success with the uh, the murder squad events. You know, oh. getting everybody in one place sounds like a, something genuinely wonderful to look forward to. Oh yes. <laughs> so, folks, we're going to have a bit of paperback writer, and thank you very much to Kate. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Here we have it. Thank you very much. I love it. Love that song. All right. So thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. That was uh, that was great fun. So Brian, is this a poem by your daughter you're going to share with well, us? Well, yeah. She she had a go at writing a poem, um, and she'd probably go mad now that I've said that it was her that wrote it. But you know, it's um, she's written it, so she will know how to say it. So I will attempt. Okay. Not long ago, a friend Tony said to me, he's on a panel on a radio who I met on Radio Merseyside one eve. Would you like to join on Zoom on Monday nights, chatting about music, books and poetry, and helping to put the whale to right? Of course, my answer was, yes, as I do like to speak. How exciting would it be to chatter and natter? What a treat. As the weeks passed, conversations were had and music was played and we all had a blast. I look forward to Monday evenings as it breaks up the days, as we all get together and talk about the good old ways. Oh, that's, that's lovely. A, oh, well, that's, that's a, her first poem that she's done ever for me, so... But look, you know, honestly, the joy is once you've started, like with anything, if you start and you and you feel that you've 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 got somewhere, you you do it again. I love so it. So Francesca, if you are well, she usually is watching it. She is watching. Well, she watches um, every week. Yeah. So she's there now listening. Keep, keep mulling your thoughts over. I mean, you, you're creative enough because I mean, you know, she makes stunning greetings cards. Um, you know, Crafty Nutkin is her little company. Um, check check her out. Check them out. Um, but writing something is such a wonderful release, isn't it? I mean, I mean, Karen writes, Brian, you, you, you write. Um, George, George, like me, works with writing. You know, I mean, you can see that hidden behind his very head there. He's got, he's got a few there. <laughs> and and Alban also, you know, is you know a, a lover of of writing. And but well, you write, you write talks, Alban, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been. Um... I did one last Thursday on King Arthur. I've got a Dickens one in a week's time. Which is the I, King I, Arthur written. one on on a, a watch again? I, I think. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you the link if you like. Yeah. Uh, I, I warn you, it, it, it's, uh, it's a bit long. I never learned Tracy very well when I was at. Uh, <laughs> and I, I'm working on, on a, a, um, a Secret Sassoon one, which I've done before, but I. We yeah, are. well, when you were in Formby, that was your big yeah. um, passion yeah. was to to push Formby yeah. to recognise Seafood Sassoon. Put a plaque which, up. Yeah. Well, it should have a plaque up. I mean, you know, I if mean, it was down, a plaque up. If it, it was south of Watford Gap, it'd have about, about three now. Yeah. Um, no, well, I think, that, that, you know, we'll have to get onto our MP fellow, won't we, or someone yeah. like that, and you know, make him earn his keep, you know. Yeah. Um, but have you got anything of your own you've written recently, Brian, or are you in in a lull? <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I've i written, but it's similar now to what Francesca's written, and hers is better than mine. But <laughs> well, it's, that's good. It's just, no, I know, I know, but it, it's just that we, I, you know, she said, Dad, what can I write a poem about? And I, and I just said, oh, maybe Tony. So, you know, we both come up with Simpler thing, but because I was on the panel with you, I've got a little bit of insight at the top. Um, I once met a guy named Tony. He was on a radio show. We always used to sit next to each other, as one some might say, toe to toe. We had a good laugh in between some chat, as we both all talked till one. 
and then we'd say our good nights as they turned off the lights. Before long, everyone was gone. But the girls that I met on that panel with us have all, have all stayed friends with me, I'm glad to say. There is Alison Henderson, Cosmic Jan, Brian the Artist, that's who I am. Sue Adamson, Sue Granger, Rachel Gibson as well. Deborah and Isera, I forgot the second name, uh, Cheryl Gibbons. Just lovely ladies they are. And I'll never forget the kindness when they all took me home in their cars. I would love to all meet for a bevy one night. Let our hair down, go mad, so to speak. Social distancing, of course. But, uh, that's all I've got to on that. Oh, that's, that's, that's lovely, mate. <laughs> so <laughs> you've been the topic of the night, you said. Well, this is, this is not, it's nice, isn't it? It's nice, yeah. Anyway, so next Monday, our special guest is our own Alban O'Brien up there, who's going to do Don't Be Bored of the Bard. Oh. Or something yeah. something connected. With, it's, yeah. For those that don't know, and everyone should know, Shakespeare has a birthday and a death day, allegedly on the same day, um, 23rd of April. Um, hence, we have St. George's Day about then, don't we? Um, we do. Which George should know about. Being, being on mute, we won't... We won't. Mute, yeah, should do. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, Alban very kindly has agreed to do a... Um, a, a PowerPoint chat on I, 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 I'll, something I'll Shakespearean. Together yeah. Just to um, uh, give it a focus. Though I know it's radio, so uh, th th there won't be. Very well, you can do a few. There. You can do a few readings if you've got a few pieces uh, yeah, you yeah, like. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'll try and convince you that um, uh, that, that Shaky is, is is worth pursuing. Yeah, and yeah. in a, in a couple of weeks' time, we've got Catherine Williams, who is a wonderful Liverpool um, singer, but has also got a new book out. Um, so Catherine Williams will be our guest. Um, I'll be arranging it with her, announcing it, you know, for, for one of the Mondays in May. And then obviously, you know, we'll, we'll be rooting around to find a few other people. Um, and hopefully in, in, in a month or so, for any who, well, Karen won't be able to unless she's visiting. But, you know, we will also be broadcasting live on a Thursday night from the actual radio station. So, you know, Alban also would have to be up visiting family and friends. Yeah. But um, I think we'll still be able to do a link through Zoom and from the station. So if people want to come in and, you know, be in the studio, we, we, we'll sort that out. Or, you know, we'll patch in via Zoom, you know, and um, see how it goes. Well, when will that be again, Tony? I, I've got to speak to the... Um, Oh, there's no date set. There's no, no date, no set, date set. No, I think it'll be after May the seventeenth. Okay. Um, anyway, listen, folks. I'm just going to stop the recording now.